The Kingsley Art Club presents another in our series of artist studio visits, which are in lieu of our in-person guest lecture series. This visit, as well as our other arts programs, is made possible by the dues and contributions of the members of the Kingsley to further our mission of bringing arts and arts education to the community. Hello, I'm Nancy Lawrence, president of the Kingsley Art Club, and I'm happy to welcome you to the third of our series of virtual programs in this year of the pandemic. You may recall, we had a studio visit with Craig Martinez in the fall, and in the winter, we were at the Crocker Kingsley at Blue Line. And today, we have a visit with Julia Cousins, who is a Sacramento artist. Just to let you know, we will be visiting Michelle Lecompte in her studio in May. But in the meantime, we're happy to have our visit with Julia Cousins. This is William Ishmael, who is our program chair, who will be introducing Julia. Thank you, Nancy. Yes, introducing Julia is such a pleasure. Uh, we had the most wonderful Sunday afternoon visit at her studio and garden in Clarksburg. And we had a really uh, interesting conversation with Julia, with her artwork, with in her studio, with her supplies, a discussion of how she acquires her supplies. It was, I, I was fascinated. So I hope you will be as well. One of the remarkable things about Julia is she's, she's a long-term artist. She's been very successful and she's been successful in various styles. Early on, she did figure drawing and work with graphite and charcoal and were, earned a lot of acclaim for that style. But then when it was time she felt to move on, she moved on, which is a brave, uh, an act of bravery um, to drop what you've become uh, well known for and to move into new areas. So I don't wanna steal any of Julia's thunder. Let me just roll the video. Good to see good you. Good to see you. We're vaccinated, so we're, vaccinated, we're, we're yes. good. So. What a beautiful house and garden you've Thank got. you. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, we're very content. So, good. would you like to come in? I would love to. All right. All right. So, uh, well, look at, I love this wall. What's that? Uh, this actually is a, um, ongoing every, uh, these are self-portraits I do for years. I have been doing a five-minute self-portrait first thing in the morning. I get up in the morning, uh, I let the dogs out, feed the chickens before I do anything, before I get dressed, brush my teeth, comb my hair. I just come in here and take my measure. It's five minutes. Uh -huh. um, just uh, no more, no less. It's not about likeness necessarily. It's about finding that, just finding a ground and the basis to begin my day. This represents probably a, a couple of months and you can see there's layers, sheets of it. I've come to accept that I'm unruly and messy and um, that what starts down here trails up into the kitchen, trails into the bedroom, and trails back. You can see stabs at organization. I have these, <laughs> these buckets of, of things, yeah. but, and I think, oh, okay, I'm gonna keep the blue fabric in the blue box <laughs> and the red fabric in the red box, right. and, it un, and it just goes. Here's the thing, and this is what's critical, is that um, it's about that seeing continually with a fresh eye. So I choose and I pick up stuff off the floor. I never know what's detritus, what's garbage, what's trash, and what's, you know, precious fine art material. It's all of a piece, it's all equal. Warhol, Andy Warhol said, uh, 
if everyone's not a beauty, then no one is. <laughs> and I think about that in terms of material. Yeah. Everything is grist. And so how do I know but that something will catch my eye on the ground? I'll see a relationship. It's an extraordinarily organic um, way, and it's for me to not have a hierarchy in materials. I put it down, and then, you know, does this, is there something here that, you know, that I can start to, you know, it's like paying attention to, is, is something um, calling my body to respond to it more? Well, what is that? And, and, and you know, to try to cook that up, trying to, to you know, summon life from inner matter and try not to judge it, try not to, and try to stay as open in the process as I can without shaping it up into art. I am so not interested <laughs> in doing what I know how to do. Someone said to me once, well, you know, your work doesn't look like art. That's, I mean, it's, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't look like art. And I'm not sure that that was a compliment, but I took it as one. Where I'm out, sort of like at the boundary of what I know is the most thrilling thing for me. I was always making work and was encouraged from from the get-go to to make art and be and be creative. I had an outstanding um, grammar school teacher who just was, she just gave me complete freedom and just her only words were be bold and be free. And I was. My first love is drawing. I've always drawn. That was what I first understood. The first class I ever took in art school was a life drawing class absolutely fell in love. I still love to draw. I still love to do life drawing and do so whenever I can. But in graduate school, um, I really focused in on charcoal drawing and started uh, an extensive series um, based on the body. Um, mortal lessons, uh, being exposed to these drawings, charcoal drawings, um, limiting my material to charcoal on paper. Finally, had I had reached the end, I was, you know, really starting to begin to choke on the charcoal dust and beginning to like understand well in advance what I was going to be doing. And um, I was an artist in residence at the Roswell Artist in Residency, and um, during that residency, I started working with. Um, clay and um, making sculpture, and that blossomed. I did a very large installation at the Crocker of 3,200 Sculpey tongues. Then my uh, mother started to need um, help, and um, which was when I needed to um, find another way of working that didn't require all of the ingredients of a studio that I could transport between here and her house, and uh, which is when I started working with tape. And that was also a way to sort of try to open up my, uh, my practice, open, you know, stay alert and attentive and present in the making. And, and the charcoal was literally split to a foregone conclusion while the tape needed to be a deliberate taping of line. And once a material enters the studio, whether it's tape, whether it's thread, whether it's a needle, it starts to circulate and then it builds on itself. And um, the tape led to, paper led to 
wire, wrapping wire. I was attracted to thickets and, and linear energy and webs and nests and strawberry baskets have linear, it's a webby material. And so then it just sorts, builds. And, uh, and now I'm here in this nest, this um, uh, rat's nest of, of material and, you know, paint sleeking in a bit, but we'll see. It's, you know, I'm just following the work. I'm following, following the work, following the impulse, following the material. Would you like to see some of my workbooks? These are little workbooks that I work on. These are, these are also little waiting in the work works. I just keep things going. Fragments a page a day just to uh, keep the pilot light on. <laughs> That's the hardest thing. And little bits, this is just little scraps of things. Sticky book full of stickies. Um, this is blue and round, so everything in this book is blue and round, theoretically. You know, it's like working off stage. It's working in the background. It's working in the dressing room before you have to go out and right, be right. on stage, because right. that stuff on stage is going to be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, as a writer, um, you know, I am able to write about art and and um, and speak about it. And um, but in the process of making it, I actually. It's, the, it's very sub-language, and I'm really more like a dumb beast in the studio uh, rooting around. And just because it's written about, people think it's, a, it's an intellectual practice, but it isn't. I mean, and, and visual intelligence is visual intelligence, and that's the thing. It's visual. So how do you describe the little shift? How do you, how do you, how do you, you know, I will spend time thinking about moving it an inch, moving this shape an inch, or I don't know, it just needs a, a dot right. at the edge in order to hold the edge and anchor the piece. It just does, and I know that because I feel it in, in, you know, I feel that balance. You know, I'm not interested in technique. I have technique. I mean, <laughs> technique is just, um, it isn't about technique. It isn't about learning a technique. It's about um, seeing and, um, you know, certainly there are skills. It's good to have skills, but but it isn't skill based. It's experiential, and it's like and so the trick is to like, how do you have you have to keep keep opening yourself. You have to keep opening so that you're able to experience and 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 have the faith that you that it's worth it. I couldn't help but notice in leafing through art publications covers, showcase the work of men, big glossy ads, work of men, group shows, men, of all this list of artists, two are women. Anyway, and in a fit of peak in the studio one day, I just stitched over. I pulled out an ad and stitched over one, like graffiti, like a just like a scribble, only using a needle and thread. And so the project blew up. And I subsequently now have a show of these textile tags. This is the book that's being published. Um, this I made a skirt 
for this fellow over this ad. And um, this is the book of over um, 182 pieces have just been delivered to the Patricia Sweetow Gallery for my show of these. And uh, I've been referred to as the Vandal Seamstress. I was very fortunate to be chosen to do a piece at the McKinley Village. And um, so I, um, had I translated the strawberry basket tapestries into a steel, like a blanket thrown over a stainless steel chair, club chair. With the idea that somebody living in a house would drag out their, their cozy chair with a cozy comforter and just read a book or snooze in the sun. And it was taken from a Wallace Stevens a uh, poem called Sunday Morning, and, um, and he speaks of coffee and oranges in a sunny chair. And so the title of the piece is Coffee and Oranges in a Sunny Chair. And I was thrilled with its outcome, and I have to give a big shout out to Roger Berry, who did the fabrication. And I just uh, watched and directed, but he uh, and his team fabricated the piece and it's brilliant. You're very supportive of the arts community in the Sacramento region mm -hmm. as well. You I am. You openings, you bring artist champagne. I do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because it's important and um, I am, I have a stake here. There's a very strong community and I think that it's, um, you know, we need to uh, believe in ourselves and um, it's critical, yeah. So thank you, uh, Julia, for allowing us to do the studio visit. And we, I hope everybody watching it found it as interesting as we did on the visit. Uh, I just wanted to put a little uh, word in for um, Julia's sh upcoming show at Patricia Sweeto Gallery. It's uh, uh, April 3rd through May 22nd. That's uh, Patricia Sweeto in San Francisco for her latest works. So with that, let me turn it over to Nancy Lawrence. And thank you, William and Julia, for letting us into your home and your studio. Um, just to remind you, we will be continuing these programs and Michelle LeCompte is going to be our fourth video program uh, from the Kingsley for this year. In addition, we are going to be starting up our membership activities again and we are planning next year already back in the museum, back with Inline, but we don't think that we want to give up this format too. We think this gives an extra something to all of you. So. We look forward to the new Kingsley activities. Thanks. <laughs>